Hey, my friends, it's Myra from Kairos Kids, and just want to talk to you again this morning about something that's in the Bible. It's a story about family. Now, all of us have a family. Our families all look a little different. We have different parents, maybe uh, two parents, maybe one parent. We have different numbers of uh, brothers and sisters. We have grandmas and aunts and uncles. And even if you're in a foster home, you have a foster mom, you have a foster dad, you know, you have some family there with you. And um, this family I want to talk to you about in the Bible, the mom's name was Rebecca. That's the same as in English, Rebecca. But in Hebrew, in the Bible, that language, it was called Rebecca or Rebecca. So, um, what happened in that family, the, husband, the daddy's name was Jake, was Isaac. You may know somebody named Isaac because that's kind of a popular name for people to name their kids. And the two, two children of Isaac and Rebecca were Jacob and Esau. You probably don't know anybody named Esau, but you might know somebody named Jacob because that's kind of a popular name too. So what happened was the daddy was going to give one blessing to one of the two boys. Now, these boys were born at the same time, which makes them what? Twins, right? They're twins because they were born at the same time. And so the daddy only was going to give one of these, though, to one of the boys. He wasn't being unfair. That was just part of the culture. And if you want to think of it in today's life, it could be maybe like back then there weren't cars. But today, it could be like a family that has one car to have for one of their two sons. And so what happened was the mom liked one of the boys better. She liked Jacob better. And the daddy was kind of liked Esau better. And the reason is because Esau had the same kind of hobbies. They liked to hunt and stuff like that. The mom liked Jacob better because he liked to do stuff at home where she was helping with um, things around the house, you know, like maybe the yard and uh, helping to grow things, fruits and vegetables, that kind of thing. So um, she wanted her son Jacob to get that one blessing that the daddy was going to give. But it was actually supposed to be for Esau. That's the way it was in their culture. And culture is, means in the, in the city where they lived. Um, they were going to give it to the boy who was born first. So even though they were twins, they had to come out one at a time. And one of them came out one minute faster than the other one. So the blessing was going to go to him. But Revka wanted the blessing to go to Jacob, the other son. And so what she did was she told Jacob, she said, hey, let's trick your dad into giving it to you. Well, Jacob didn't feel right about that inside. He said, no, what? he'll know. He'll know it's me tricking him. And she said, no, I'll help you do it. So you know what? A mom shouldn't do that. She shouldn't help somebody trick another person because that's not honest. Um, and what she could have done was prayed to God and said, God, just make there be two blessings, two of the blessings, not just one. But she didn't do that, and she tried to get Jacob to trick. Well, Jacob said, I don't want to. And she just kept saying, yes, yes, I'll help you. And so finally, he said okay to his mom. Now, if you're in a situation at home, and somebody in your family is trying to get you to do something you know is wrong, you can say no. You don't want to scream and yell and pitch a fit. No, no, no. That's not how we do it. We say, I don't feel right about that. I don't want to do that. No, I, want, I don't want to do that. You can say no if it's something actually wrong and bad, like tricking someone. Otherwise, you need to respect your parent because they care about you and they love you and they're trying to make you have a good, safe, successful life. So anyway, Jacob decided to go along with his mom, and they came up with this plan, 
and Jacob went in to talk to his dad, and his dad couldn't see very good. He would have worn glasses, but they didn't have glasses back then. So he just went in to see his dad, and his dad couldn't see him very well, but he tried to disguise his voice. Jacob tried to disguise his voice and disguise who he looked, what he looked like, and he said to the dad, give it to me, and I am Esau your other son. And he, so the daddy couldn't see, so he believed it. Even though the dad said, well, you don't sound like my other son, but okay, I'll believe you. And so he went in, he went ahead and gave the blessing to that son, not the one he meant to, but to Jacob, the one the mom told to trick him. Well, he left the room, he got what he wanted, he left the room, and here comes the other son, Esau. He comes in and he says, Hey, Dad, I did what you said and I got you this. Now give me my blessing. And the dad said, What? You, you just came in here and got the blessing. And he said, No, Dad, I was out there doing what you said. And he said, Oh, no, Jacob tricked me. And Esau, the brother, he got so mad. He got so mad. And so after they were all mad and crying and the whole family was all upset and the mom came in and she got yelled at and all this happened, they had a big fuss because of it, which that happens if you do dishonest things. It's going to cause your family not to get along very well at that moment because they're going to get upset. But they should calm down. So after everything kind of calmed down, it wasn't calmed down for the older brother Esau. He said to himself and to somebody else, he said, I'm not going to do it yet because I don't want my dad to know that after my dad dies, I'm going to kill my brother. So the big brother Esau was thinking he was going to kill the other brother. Well, the mom heard that he said that. And so she got scared because she loved that other son, Jacob, who had tricked the dad. So now she's afraid to let him still live there anymore. And she says, what should I do to protect my son? And she says, Jacob, come here. And she says, Jacob, I'm so sorry about this, but you're going to have to run away. You're going to just have to run away to save your life from your dad, from your brother. He's going to kill you. You need to run away. So see what mom did? She tricked dad through the kid and then she made the son run away to keep, keep from him getting killed. What a big mess that family was in. But you know what? Jacob had to do it. So Jacob left and Jacob went all the way across the desert because this happened in Israel. It's across the ocean from us in, the, in a country called Israel. And so Jacob ran away. He took a little bag of stuff that he wanted to take with him, some food and stuff like that. And he started walking and he ran. He ran away across the desert. Well, when he got over to the place where he ran to, he found his mom's brother. So Re Rebecca, her brother named Laban, was all the way across the desert, and he found the family. So it was still his family. So he went to live with another part of his family, his uncle. And he, his uncle had two girls named Leah and Rachel. And so they were his cousins. And so he went to live with them. Jacob stayed there for 20 years. That's a long time. That's how long it takes for a baby to go from being born all the way to being in college. That's how long, 20 years. So Jacob stayed away 20 years. It's a long time. Well, he got married and he ended up getting all kinds of riches, a lot of cattle and horses and camels and sheep and all kinds of things like that. And so after 20 years, he told his uncle, he said, he told his wife, Wives, he said, I want to go back to my home now. So he had been gone 20 years, and that's a long time. So he was getting homesick, and he wanted to go back home. 
And so the family and all their cattle and everything, all their wealth, they left and they went all the way back across the desert. Well, when they got back, they were afraid that the big brother was still going to be mad. And they heard that the big brother knew they were coming and he had 400 men with him walking toward Jacob. And he thought, oh no, it's an army. They're going to kill us. So he came up with a plan and he put, he said, he started giving his, all his wealth to his brother. He sent some first, with some servants and said, and told them, tell my brother, this is a gift from Jacob. Then he sent some more of his wealth with some other servants. And he said, tell my brother, this is from Jacob. And then he sent another group and then he sent another group. So by the time that Esau found Jacob, Esau had seen all of these groups coming and saying, these are gifts from your brother Jacob. And then another, these are gifts. These are gifts. And so it softened Esau's heart. So he no longer wanted all these men to kill Jacob. And so the brothers instead, they hugged each other and, and they cried and cried because they were so sorry that all of that stuff had happened in their family. And they were so happy to be back together. So Esau turned around with all his men and he went on back home to Isaac's house. And he told his mom, Jacob's coming. Remember what I told you, how much Jacob's mom loved him? And so she got so excited and happy and crying and all kinds of feelings because she was so happy. Her son who had been gone all those 20 years was now coming back. So you know what she did? She got all her favorite stuff and she put it in a bag and she brought her maid who helped take care of her and she went and she started living with Jacob because she wanted to try to make up for time that they had lost. And so she went and lived with Jacob and his family and not with Esau and Isaac anymore. And the reason we know that, the Bible doesn't say Rebecca left and went to live with Jacob. But the reason we know it is because at one place, this is a story in Genesis, by the way. Um, this story is from Genesis in 26, and it goes actually goes on through for about 10 chapters in the Bible. But when we get to chapter 35, there is a verse that says, Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died. And they buried her below Bethel under an oak. And the name of it is called the Oak of Weeping. So we know that if Rebecca's nurse was with Jacob's family, then Rebecca would have been there too. So that's how we know that Rebecca came and lived with Jacob. Now, behind me is a painting of a tree. So this is what they did with Rebecca's nurse. Her name was Deborah, they would have in those days, they would have taken the person and they would have dug a hole and they would have put the person in the hole and wrapped up in cloths and buried them in the hole and then put the dirt, just like we do burials today, and would have buried them in the, but they did it under a tree. And then they gave the tree a name. They called it the Oak of Weeping or the Oak of where we cried and we were sad. Now, back, I know I've been to Israel and they don't have a lot of trees. They don't have a whole lot of landmark places like, gosh, in East Tennessee, we've got stuff everywhere. Um, but back then they didn't. And so what they did was they named the tree so they would always remember that that's where Rebecca's maid was buried who they loved very much. And when she died, they cried about it because they were sad. An interesting thing is her name being Deborah. I don't know if you remember me talking about another Deborah a couple weeks ago when I was on here. Deborah, who was the president of Israel. That was later, not this Deborah, but that both Deborahs were under a tree. Isn't that interesting? This Deborah was buried under an oak tree. The other Deborah used to sit under a tree, kind of like what I'm sitting here. And she would sit under a tree 
and people would come to her as the president. That was kind of like her president's office. And she would sit under the tree and people would come to her about their, their needs. So that's very interesting that both Debras in the Bible are under a tree. One is buried there. The other one was the president there. And maybe I'll tell you that story a little later. But anyway, for today, I just wanted to kind of encourage you kids that sometimes families look different. Sometimes they might have a mom and dad like Isaac and Rebecca, and they had two children, Esau and Jacob. But then what happened? He had four people, but then Jacob... His mom got him to trick his dad, and then she had to get it, save his life, so she sent him to run away. So then there was just three people there, Rebecca, Isaac, and Esau. And they were living together, and Jacob went and lived with the uncle and cousins. Twenty years later, Jacob comes back, but he's a grown man, so he's not going to live with them, but he's going to live near them. And Rebecca, she goes and lives with Jacob and his wives and children. And so now there's two dad and Esau and mom and Jacob, and they have fat families. So they're not all living all together, but they still love each other. They're still family, but they are living different. And so that happens today too. Hopefully you don't go through the tricking part or somebody has to run away to keep from getting in trouble. Uh, we don't want to do that. But even when our families change, we can always be praying to God, we can be talking to God, we can learn how to listen to God because He wants to make us feel better inside and feel comforted if we're sad because somebody in our family leaves. Like, what if your big sister moves out and she goes to college? That's kind of sad because then you've got sisters not there anymore, right? Or maybe dad has to go work somewhere else and he's gone, you know, or maybe your parents get a divorce, but you can still have like Esau and, you know, you can still have your families just like Rebecca and Jake and Isaac, but you just have, it just looks different. You understand? And if it makes you sad, the Lord wants to make you comforted about it and make you feel better about it and help you to adjust to the new family. Okay? That's what the Lord wants for you. He wants to help your heart get used to things the way they change. And our lives change all the time. They change. Sometimes we move to a new house and there's that kind of change. Sometimes a family, a sibling gets uh, your brother or sister gets old and they move and they go away to where they are going to be having their own new family. So that's a change. You might be the one who moves away and has to go have your new family or be the one that goes to college and leaves the family. And you go to your college and you meet new friends and, and you still have your family, but you're not living there. So see how things change? Just want you to be encouraged that actually getting able to where you can adjust to those changes is very important and you can do it you can learn how to get adjusted to those changes as they happen in our lives you can do it you just ask the lord help me lord to get used to changes when they happen and he will he will help you and if you ever get in a situation where you're trying to trick somebody or get something away from somebody that's not yours, ask the Lord to forgive you and try to go to the person and make it right and say, I'm sorry I did this. Just like Jacob and Esau when they finally found each other, 20 years later they hugged and they loved each other and they cried because they both were sorry about the whole thing. So you can always try to make it right. If you do something wrong, you can fix it. And it's okay. We don't have to feel really horrible. Oh, I made a horrible mistake. If you feel that, you just say, I got to go fix it. And then you go and talk to the person. Okay? So let me pray for you. Lord, I just praise you for these children. I bless them in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for their families. Their families love them and take care of them. And whatever their family shape looks like, Mom, dad, kids, grandma, cousins, aunts, uncles, 
whatever they look like, Lord, I pray that you will bless the kids to enjoy all their family in all the ways that their family is a blessing to them. And I thank you for that, Father, and I trust you, God, to help them if they need to make something right with the family member that they'll go talk to them and, and ask them to forgive them. And if somebody did it to them, that they'll say, I forgive you. And I thank you, Lord, for being so close and real to the children. In Jesus' name, amen.